لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أسى محرمتها وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The Athri Creed or the series The Athri Creed is ongoing and I'm not planning on making video after video. What I mean by in sequence. Sometimes I'll break and record something else. But there is a series that I will be recording to highlight the Athri Creed and. The Athri Creed, at the end of the day, as I mentioned before, is the, uh, the Manhaj of the Salaf and it's the Creed of the Salaf, as I, as I clarified. I like to add as well, which is, which is very, very important, that when we as Athrites affirm what Allah affirms for Himself in a manner that befits His Majesty, right? What we say is that whatever attributes that we affirm is what Allah clarified and mentioned or described himself with, or his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. So we affirm those attributes. To stress, when we affirm those attributes, I can make it clear and categoric, it's not body parts. Allah does not resemble his creation in any way, shape or form. So please take that, pin it, that when we affirm what Allah affirms for himself, we always add the clause, there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, what, and all those attributes that we affirm they are not body parts when we affirm his reality his haqiqi we affirm that these are literal in terms of its reality they exist how they are we don't know we don't ask about the hours we do tafweed of the cave we re relegate that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these attributes are literal but not in the sense that they are body parts, okay? So please get that out there because I think uh, it's getting lost uh, where when we say haqiqi, we, the people are assuming, and again, I'm not saying all people, but there could be a small group of people that might think, well, hold on here, if they're affirming the literal, then if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions hands, he means he has body parts, he has a limb. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands, they are, they are haqiqi, but they are not body parts, okay? So let's get that out there. Now, continuing on, Ibn Battal rahmatullah was from the, lay, the early 400s, okay, I'm working backwards, so as the Athari Creed continues on, we're going to get to the Imams of the Salaf, but I'm showing you it's president that Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, Shaykh al-Islam is not the representative of the Athari Creed, and there's, a, there's another misunderstanding out there that the Athari Creed is just basically starting from Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, and it carries on. And anyone that sort of uh, followed this course or path, it's basically, its root goes back to Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Far from the truth. And I think that's another clause I need to add. So Ibn Battal al-Maliki was from the early Malikiyah. Was from the early Malikiyah. I think he is early 400s, I think. And he had a very interesting position on the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, I'm going to work backwards going to the Imams of the Salaf. I have been in communication. I have um, the direct number of Sheikh Hassan Qatani, Hafidhullah. And I've been in discussions with him regarding this. And I don't want to go into you know, our private conversations, but if anyone wants to you know, listen to what he advised me, uh, I'm more than happy to play you know, between ourselves. I'm not going to put it on publicly on YouTube. But leave that to one side. He's got a very interesting position, which even I was like when I heard it, oh, wow, you know, I can see you know, what he's saying. So let's leave that to one side. So Ibn Battal wrote a sharh of Sahih al-Bukhari. What I'm getting to is that Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani also wrote a sharh, right? Which is more renowned and more famous. But Ibn Battal al-Maliki from the early Maliki also wrote a sharh of this, uh, of, of Sahih al-Bukhari. And his stances on the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very similar or, or if not exactly the same as the Athari Creed. So this is going way before Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah And this is an early sharh of Sahih al-Bukhari. So when we go back, going back to the 300s and the 200s and etc, etc, you will see that the Athari Creed was the creed of the Salaf. 
and was the greatest Sahaba. As you can see on screen, we've got the book Sirah, A'lam Nubala by Imam al Dahabi. And now he's discussing the great scholar Ibn Battal. Ibn Battal. And he first starts off by saying, Shariq Sahil Bukhari. He's one of the explainers of Sahil Bukhari. And he mentions that he passed away in the month of Safar in the year 449. Then Imam Dahabi said, Qultu. Kana min kibar al Malikiyah. He's one of the major scholars of the Malikiyah. And this has been mentioned by Al Qadi Iyad. Qadi Iyad mentioned this. That he is one of the major scholars of the Malikiyah. So coming back to me now. But as you just read, Ibn Battal is one of the explainers of Sahil Bukhari. He died in, in the year 449. And Imam al Dahabi said that he is one of the major scholars of the Malikiyah. And this has also been mentioned by Qadi or Al Qadi Al Iyad, who was also a major scholar of the Malikiyah. So the passages that I would read is from the actual Shari itself of Sahih Bukhari. So he is explaining the book of Imam Al Bukhari. And Imam Al Bukhari mentions chapter headings, right? He mentions chapter headings. And under these chapter headings, Imam Al Bukhari brings a hadith to solve. It's the, obviously connect to the tabweeb, connect to the chapter heading. So I, I'm, I'm speaking now. Let's just go into it. You understand what I mean? As you can see on screen, we've got the book, Sharh Sahil Bukhari, Li Ibn Battal. I've waffled on a bit now. So as you can see, the chapter, the Bab, where uh, Imam Bukhari presents the ayat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which mentions which I have created with my two hands, meaning Adam Alayhi Salam, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala created Adam Alayhi Salam with his two hands. Presents the famous hadith of the intercession narrated by Anas radhiyallahu anhu. That where we would go, go to Prophet to Prophet seeking intercession. But where the arrow is over, because what I'm trying to get to is that Imam Bukhari connects the ayat to a hadith, which where he presents ayats, etc. And a hadith uh, connected to the chapter heading, which is uh, which I created with my two hands. So where the arrow is over, we would say, Ya Adam, Ama taran nas. Can you not see the people? Allah created you with his hand. So there's, that's obviously connected to the chapter heading. And then it, the other hadith of intercession where we go to Prophet to Prophet and they will send us to, to, to you know, different Prophets and then where we go to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who will make intercession. It presents numerous ahadith. Uh, one of them obviously mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grasp the earth or, or the earths and then he will grasp the heavens with his right hand and he will say I'm the king and then another hadith by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah would gra grasp the earth meaning with his hand and then he mentions the last hadith about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placing the earth uh, on, on, on his finger and then the mountains and the trees and, and etc etc it's all there now how does Ibn Battal explain these ahadith now istidlaluhu min qawlihi ta'ala that we gather evidence from the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have created with my two hands, meaning Adam alayhi salam, and the rest of the ahadith in this chapter, okay, in this bab, that the affirmation of Allah's two hands. Ibn Battal mentions that per this Quranic ayat and the rest of the ahadith in this bab, that we affirm the two hands for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, using the, the, the tabweeb, the, the Quranic ayat which he mentions. And the ahadith that are in this chapter. Then what does he say? Huma, them two, meaning Allah's two hands. Sifatan, they are both attributes. Min sifati thatihi. That these two hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or these two attributes, are from the sifat of Allah's that. The attributes of Allah's essence. These two hands. Then what does Ibn Battal say, which is very important, where the arrow is over? Laysata bijarihatain. They are these two, these two hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not limbs, they are not organs. This is what the Atharis say. Okay. And then he mentioned uh, opposing the sayings of the Mujassima who affirm that they are both limbs or organs, and opposing the sayings of the Qadariya who denied the sifat. Of his essence, meaning these two hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the sifat of his essence. Okay, now coming back to me now before I continue. So, let me just have a, a sip of water. Uh, I've been speaking up, Bismillah. I love my glass bottle with water, keeps it very, very cold. Love it. So, subhanallah al Ibn Battal 
from the early Malikiya. Uh, I think he's Ash'ari as well, but he's of the early Ash'ara. This is why it's important to distinguish that the early Ash'ara were nearly enough Atharis, you know, if you could call them that. And again, this is not me saying it, and obviously if you, I'm giving it away to a certain extent, but don't worry about it regarding my conversation with Sheikh Hassan Katani. So Imam, Imam Ibn Battal clearly categorically confirms, right, that we gather evidence from the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the tabweeb and the ahadith that are presented in this chapter. That, and the rest of the ahadith in this bab, okay, upon affirming the two hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. They, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. And they are both two attributes from the attributes of Allah's essence. With his dhati, of his that. And they are not, these two attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not limbs or organs. And then he mentions the opposite, the mujassima, muthbita, or al muthbita, that they are both body parts. See, what, what people need to understand is this when people throw around the, the phrase mushabbiha, the mushabbiha affirmed Allah's attributes. But what did they affirm them as? Organs and limbs. They affirmed, they affirmed them as jawahir, they affirmed them as body parts, as organs. We as Atharis affirm Allah's attributes, but we clearly say that they are not body parts. Okay, but they are literal, meaning they are literal hands. But the literal here, the haqiqi here, are not body parts. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we affirm these two hands, we don't just affirm the words. We actually affirm that Allah has two hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Ibn Battal is saying. Exactly what the Athari say. So what I like to clarify now, that this is way before Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi. Do you see what I'm saying? So the Athari creed, in essence, it's not something that is new. It's not something that is just restricted to certain groups of people. And they obviously have their own favorable view of who those people are. The Hanabil and Mufawwidah. Okay, but that's another question, that's another issue altogether, right? The Ibn Battal further goes on to say that it's not permissible to say that they are two organs or limbs. And also it's not permissible to say that they are two, that they're innahuma qudratan, that they are two abilities. Now the reason why, okay, let's carry it, let's bring it back to me now so you'll understand what this means. Ibn Battal is refuting those who made ta'wil of these attributes. So, he's, so why is affirming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands, okay, literal two hands, but not like the human hands, because as it's confirmed, laysata bijahiratain, they are not two organs or limbs, but they are two hands. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two literal hands, but not like the humans, not organs or limbs, as Ibn Battal says. But he also refused those who make ta'weed, the ma'awwul. He's saying that it's also not permissible to say that they are qudratan, that they are two abilities. Because we hear some, and even today, that they say, those hands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, they are, they are his ability. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lima khalaqtu bi yaday, that I created Adam with my two hands, then if it's two hands, it can't be just one qudra. Is Qudratain. So Ibn Battal is refuting that notion that those who make that ta'wil and he's saying, no, you can't say there are two Qudras, okay? Because it's only one Qudra. You can't say Qudratan. You understand? Let's carry on. And it's also not permissible to say Ni'matan, that there are two blessings, because you find people say that it's Qudra uh, and Ni'ma. So it's refuting that notion or the refuting that position or refuting that. Uh, Batil Ta'wil that okay it's uh, you know it's, it's blessings but it's not because it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in a dual form and they said but if those who say Qudratan they have corrupted it meaning the corrupted the sort of attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by two ways the Ibn Battal mentions one of the two is that the Ummah have united between um, those who negate the sifat of his that the sifat of his essence Okay, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And between those who affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have two qudras, does not have two abilities, but in fact he has one, which is the saying of the muthbita. Now the muthbita here is the mujassima muthbita. Okay? And he has no qudra as per the saying of those who negate the sifat. 
meaning the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiyya and then like. Ibn Battah makes a very interesting point now, but I'm going to summarize it because it's very lengthy and I don't want to go uh, and make this, you know, very, very expansive. He mentions that if this hand was ability which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam with and he created Iblis, Iblis would not basically made an argument with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding, obviously, making sujood. Okay, he would not have argued. Because Iblis shared with Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him with his qudra, and also Iblis would have been created by his qudra as well. And then Ibn Battal, just to summarize, mentions that obviously Iblis could have said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Lord, what virtue does he have over me? Because I am created by your ability, like he has been created by your ability. Do you see what, I'm, do you see what Ibn Battal is trying to get to? So to summarize, Ibn Battal is saying with the arrows over that basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sp specifically created Adam with his two hands which he did not specify for Iblis with the arrows over. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Iblis to make sujood because he specified and made a special uh, creation of Adam alayhi salam obviously through clay etc and he created him with his two hands. This is why there was a special need for the angels and the and Iblis at the time to make sujood. And he carries on, he goes into it in so much depth but I'm just gonna make it brief. So that's Ibn Battal's clear explanation which is upon the Athari creed. Clearly this is an Athari uh, position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam with his two hands. He created him with his two hands and they are literal hands but they're not body parts, they're not organs as Ibn Battal confirms and they're not qudratan, they're not two abilities and they're not ni'matan etc. And I've already you know summarized what Ibn Battal was intended. So <laughs> this is the Athari creed my friends and this is not um, you know, anthropomorphic at all because we've already confirmed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from body parts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have organs, does not have limbs, laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he has two literal hands. But they are not body parts, they're not organs. But they are two hands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Okay. So that's one. Now, this is Kitab al Tawheed. So Ibn Battah goes into other ahadith in this chapter and the tabweeb and comments on obviously the ahadith in this particular chapter but I just want to make a quick uh, side note and I bring a hadith to your attention right and it's authentic as you can see on screen we've got the book uh, Sunan Ibn Majah okay Sunan Ibn Majah by Ibn Majah and you could check it out this is hadith number 198 it mentions that Abdullah ibn Umar, Annahu qal, Samiatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala al minbar yakul, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on the minbar and he said, Ya'khudu jabbaru samawatihi wa arduhu biyadihi, that the jabbar will take the heavens and earth in his hand. And then Abdullah ibn Umar mentions, Wa qabada biyadihi. فَجَعَلَهُ يَغْبِدُهَا وَيَبْسُطُهَا That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then started clenching his fist, okay, and began to open and close it, okay? So come back to me now. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that he's on top of the member, right? And he mentioned that the Jabbar, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, will seize the heavens and the earth in his hand. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started closing and opening his own hand. Okay, now this is not saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands like the humans. We already confirmed he has, he has hands but not organs or limbs. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is demonstrating. Now what do you say about this hadith here? It's authentic. It's authentic. So what I'm saying is don't rush to call people anthropomorphic, right? Don't rush to call people anthropomorphic. Then thumma yaqul, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, anul jabbaru, aynal jabbaroon. Where are the tyrants and where are the pride ones? Okay. And the messenger, then he mentions that the messenger of Allah was moving right and left. Then Abdullah bin Umar is commenting and he says, That he saw that the, 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 the member was moving left and right. It was moving left and right. Because the Prophet ﷺ was demonstrating it to such an extent that the member was shaking. Then Abdullah bin Umar said, Hatta inni akul, that he was thinking to himself, what, what, what happens or what if the Prophet ﷺ falls while he's on the member? That's how much you know the Prophet ﷺ was sort of demonstrating this, this powerful moment on the day of judgment. So coming back to me now, okay, coming back to me. Look at the emphasis here, alright? All of these, you know, 
ta'wilat, etc. wasn't done by the Salaf. And I'm going back. I'm not even in the time of the Salaf yet. I'm going all the way back. But I'm showing you the precedent of what was following on. And this is way before Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Okay? Another point I'd like to make as well is that Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani brought this hadith. But he added some other, he added something else in there which doesn't even exist in the hadith. But it's shocking to the point that why isn't he an anthropomorphic now? Again, you could say al ghunya is disputed. But then when you go to other books, there's other works that he mentions which are exactly the same as al So if that's tampered or if that's not authentic, then obviously what about this? Because they're all mentioning the same thing. But as you can see on screen, he mentions that, uh, and it's been narrated by Nafi' and Ibn Umar anhu, that Ibn Umar anhu narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon the minbar and he was reciting the verse that the, the heavens would be grasped in his right hand. And then he said, as if it would be in his right hand and he would throw it like a young boy throws a ball. Okay. And then he would say, Ana Azizun, I am the Aziz. And then I, I, I thought to myself, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was moving and I, I thought he was going to fall down. Now, this obviously narration is not in Ibn Majah. Uh, according to the footnotes, it's in al Asma wa Sifat of al Bayhaqi. But again, this is not in Ibn Majah, and I don't know whether this uh, hadith is authentic. Anyway, carrying on now. Ibn Bata also commented on other hadith in Kitab al Tawheed, which mentioned the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what was his understanding of it? What was his creed? What was his istidlal of it? I'm going to summarize it now because I've already made it lengthy, and I don't like these videos to be too lengthy. So, let's continue. So, he presents. The, the, the chapter of, of which Imam Bukhari presents that everything will perish apart from his face and then he presents the hadith okay of the Prophet وسلم, seeking refuge in Allah's face so where you can see where the arrow is over it says I seek refuge in your face so Ibn Battal now comments right and he mentions so Ibn Battal mentions that this is used as evidence from these verses and these hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face okay and this is the attribute of his essence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat of his yad is of his essence and the sifat of his face is also from his essence. And we don't say huwa huwa. We don't say it's like this or it's like that. And this is in opposition to the Mu'tazila. And Ibn Bata goes into it and as I said I'm just to make it brief but where the arrow is over right at the bottom he says that we affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a face but not like our faces. Okay. So I'm going to connect this as well to what Ishaq ibn Rahiwe said when he was defining what tashbih is. This is basically it. But I'm going to present it from an imam from the Salaf who is a teacher of all the muhaddithun and the teacher of Imam Bukhari specifically. So as he says, that we, as with arrows of we affirm that Allah has a face but not like our faces. Okay, it's not organs or limbs. And as he mentions, لِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ because there's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has a face. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seeking refuge in it because it's a face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we affirm. But it's not like al wujuh It's not like the faces of the humans. لِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ as Ibn Battal says. So coming back to me now, right? So what, I, what is mentioned here, you, you will find that this has precedent from the Salaf. That how they define tashbih. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face. It's the face of his attribute, which is his, from his essence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. And these attributes are literal, not like humans, not like organs. But these attributes are the attribute of his that, of his essence. Face, hands. Two hands and a face. Okay? They're not body parts. I have emphasized on that because people might you know, think this terminology is, you know, uh, leading towards a face, uh, which is the face of a human and the hands are the hands of a human. No. And this is where we need to draw the line. And the, those who are, you know, issue this rhetoric need to calm down. Bismillah. I don't know, this cold water is amazing. Anyway. Let's carry on, I'm going to summarize it again. So Ibn Battal now is presenting uh, the chapter heading from Imam Bukhari. So he presents uh, the verses from the Quran that mention Allah's eye uh, or eyes in, in another one. And then he then uh, he presents, Imam Bukhari presents the hadith of Dajjal, okay, as you can see on screen. So Ibn Battal, Ibn Battal mentions that this is used as evidence from these ayats that are above, okay, and from the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an attribute which is called an eye. And basically it's not a body part. It's not an organ. So as you can see in my hand, I've got Kitab al-Tawheed by Ibn Khuzayma, okay, one of the uh, muhaddithun from the Salaf, okay. And as you can see, he mentions the chapter of affirming an eye for Allah Azza wa Jal, 
okay? And affirming what the Khalik affirmed for himself from those ayats that are muhkam, uh, which have been revealed and upon the uh, tongue of the uh, chosen messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Khuzayma rahmatullah alayhi says, Qala Allahu azza wa jal li nabiyyihi Nuh sallawatullahu alayhi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh uh, alayhi salam, the majestic, the powerful, he said, Wasna'i al-fulka bi-a'yunina wa wahyina. That construct a ship under our eyes and under our revelation. And then he mentions, wa qala jalla wa ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Tajri bi a'yunina, that flow with un underneath our eyes. And then he mentions numerous ayats from the Quran. Ibn Khuzayma rahmatullah alayhi mentions, Fawajibun ala kulli mu'minin. That it's imperative on, the, on every believer to affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Creator affirmed for himself an I. So he mentions it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed for himself an I. Then Ibn Khuzayr mentions that it's not from the believers to obviously negate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed for himself, which is from the muhkam uh, al-tanzilihi, which is from the sort of established book, and which has been clarified by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he mentions, this is for the arrows, that it's been clarified that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two eyes. Okay, this is from Ibn Khuzayma. Uh, from the Salaf, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had two eyes, which is basically in agreement with the Quran, uh, which is between the, 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 the two covers, as Ibn Khuzayma mentions. So here you go, we got Kitab al-Tawheed by Ibn uh, Khuzayma. Also, and just to sort of bring clarity, then under the chapter of uh, what has been narrated from the uh, people of Hadith and Ahl Sunnah, and then he mentions obviously that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne, as it's been mentioned in Surah Taha, that the most merciful is above his throne, uh, rising above his throne. Then he mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. So even uh, Abu Hassan actually also confirmed this without asking the howness, which is the Athri petition, uh, as per the verse, khalaqtu uh, bi which we presented from Ibn Batal and, and Kitab al Tawheed wa Sahih al Bukhari. And then as per the verse, that Allah's two hands are open and outstretched in Surah Al Ma'idah. And then he mentioned that he has two eyes without asking how. As per Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Qamar that you, you are continuing under our eyes and he has a face as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that um, what will remain of your Lord is his face, the most majestic, most uh, generous. Here you go, we got Maqalatul Islamiyin by Abu Hassan al-Ashari and it's also an Iban as well but I don't need to present it. So to conclude and to summarize that as you know what I've presented, it's not a uh, creed which is strange is not a creed that is anthropomorphic it's clear that these attributes have been affirmed and they are uh, literal but they're not body parts they're not organs they have a reality and this haqiqa this reality is that these attributes exist they are literal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has them but they're not body parts or organ. So if you want to verify the information that I've presented, it's on screen anyway, take the screenshots and send it to your local ulama and get it verified. Don't take my word for it. The information is there on screen, right? That's why I present it on screen, because I'm not hiding anything. I'm not withholding any information. I could just sat there and just read out the information on my phone and not present it on screen. But I make a conscious effort to put it on screen because I want you to go check it. I want you to go get it verified. And if you're not satisfied with my answers, or if you're not satisfied with my position, that's fine, no problem. If you disagree with me, no problem. It's no issue whatsoever. And not one party should superimpose their beliefs on the other. If you believe what you believe, present it. If they accept it, khair. If they don't accept it, no problem. That's down to them. Likewise, I'm not superimposing what I believe on you. I'm presenting it. If you want to accept it, ma fi mushkila. If you want, if you want to reject it, ma fi mushkila. It's up to you. But the information is on screen. So if you're not content with my explanation, you're not content with how I've presented it, and how I've presented it, and the wordings that I've used, or the terminologies that I've used, or the translation is not up to scratch, go get it verified. You know, if you feel that that's the case. So please, I'm not, I'm not here to pull, pull the wool over your eyes. So take care of yourselves. Until the next video, the Athari Creed. وصلى على نبينا محمد ليس الغريب غريب الشام واليمن إن الغريب غريب اللحد والكفن 
إن الغريب له حق لغربته على المقيمين في الأوطان والسكن سفر بعيد وزاد يبلغني وقوتي ضعفت والموت يطلبني ما أحلم الله عني حيث أمهلني وقد تماديت في ذنب ويسترني تمر ساعه 